Hello and welcome to GeoProducts' technical web series. Today we're going to be talking about EnviroGrid and the use of it on slope applications. I'm Mike Jotsky, the technical director here at GeoProducts. Please feel free, free to reach out to us at any time for any concerns or any help you need. Uh, we're here to help you with uh, design help, uh, just answer questions, um, or get product to you. So, slope applications. So uh, GeoCell can be basically used on pretty much any slope. Um, when you're draping it over it, uh, which is what we're talking about today, uh, it can be used on pretty much any slope up to about 70 degrees. Um, once you get past that, you're going to be having to stack it as a retaining wall type system. Um, as you can see, we've used it on lots of different applications. Um, we use it on channel slopes. We use it a lot on roadways, uh, picture there on the bottom. A uh, picture on this top is a landfill that we did where we were able to steepen the, um, the slopes of the landfill so they were able to put more material in there um, as opposed to just having natural soil slopes. Um, it worked extremely well and they were really happy that they were able to put more material into that uh, landfill um, to be able to utilize the space that they had. So how does it work? So the main functions um, is containment basically um, when you're thinking about uh, geocell or envirogrid on a slope. So as you dump that soil onto a, a normal slope, it's going to want to slide down um, unless you have something there to hold it. And biogrid provides that containment, uh, those little cells that are able to contain it on the slope. Not only does it keep that material there, it also kind of creates little coffer dams um, along the way so that uh, as water will flow over it, it slows that water down and keeps that material in place. Um, you know, and if it's a vegetated system too, of course, the roots are going to hold it together as well. So, um, something do, you do need to consider though is um, you're also going to have to anchor the system, uh, which we provide um, tendons or enviroclips to be able to anchor it to a slope. Um, we do provide calculators um, or we can do the calculations for you. Um, so that uh, we provide you exactly how many tendons, uh, how strong they need to be, or, or how many clips, and give you a pattern of how to install that. Um, the other thing you do need to consider, though, um, is making sure you're using a high quality geocell. Um, a lot of uh, manufacturers are starting to use recycled um, plastics or plastics with additives, um, which severely reduces the uh, strength of the seams. Um, Virgin HDPE is going to give you the strongest seam and which is really important on a slope application because as you have that weight pulling on that even though the tendon straps might be able to hold a lot of it if those seams break you're going to lose the system so make sure you're using a high quality material um, viral grid uh, or geocell material some other things to consider is when you're looking at the actual slope you do need to consider global stabilization um, and how deep maybe adding material if that's going to cause any type of other slope failure or sliding failure. Um, so, you know, picture there in the middle, you can kind of see there's some sloughing of the material uh, of that slope already happening. Um, now, adding a geocell system to that is definitely possible, but we would have to consider um, if there's other anchors or anything else that needs to be done. So, sometimes you do need to consider some type of geotechnical report, or usually we can look at it and make a, an evaluation for you um, and help whoever your engineer is make the decision of what needs to be done to make sure that's stabilized. Selecting the product, um, like I mentioned before, we do have a calculator where you put in the parameters of the slope, what type of material you're gonna be putting on it, and it will tell you um, what size material you need to use. But it basically comes down to the steeper the slope, the smaller the cell you want, the smaller the aperture your cell. So if it's a really gentle slope, you can use an EGA-40, which is a very large cell opening. Um, but if it's a steep slope, you're gonna wanna use a smaller slope because that material is gonna wanna slide out of that. Um, you know, it's gonna sit at a slight angle. So if the um, cell is too big, you won't be able to get enough soil into that, that cell. Also, the height of the cell uh, becomes important on slope angle. So again, the steeper the slope, the higher or the, the, yeah, the higher the geocell you're gonna need uh, to be able to hold enough material in there 
um, to be able to make it sufficient. So some of the considerations to think about as you're designing, um, but here's an example of uh, a project that we did um, with uh, EnviroGrid on a slope. Now, real quick before we get into that example, um, the typical design um, is to create a trench at the top. Um, e with either system you use, if you're using tendons or if you're using EnviroClips, you're gonna want a trench because you need to have a cutoff for water not to get underneath there. So if you're using tendons, then you're gonna provide a dead man anchor at the bottom of that trench, and that's where you're gonna be tying your tendons to. If you're using the Enviro grid or the Enviro clips, you're just gonna be digging a trench to bury that top leading edge of the Enviro grid so that water doesn't travel underneath it. You'll be putting some of the Enviro clips in that trench, filling it up, and then continuing the Enviro clips down the slope. So this was a, a coastal application. Um, as you can see, it was a very steep slope, um, but there was a lot of erosion happening and there was actually a resort on top of that um, slope that didn't want to lose more of its property um, to erosion. So we trenched in um, the EnviroGrid at the top of it, pulled it down like an accordion. You can do all the work up top connecting the panels and everything and just pull it down over, over the side. And then you start filling it. We used the long reach excavator from the top and from the bottom to be able to fill that. Um, they came back, they hydro seeded it, and after a few months, you can see that it uh, vegetated extremely well. You can see where we stopped the construction. Um, you know, there's a huge difference between the protected slope and the unprotected slope. So just a quick example of an application that can be used on. Um, now, one thing you do have to also decide when you're designing is what type of material you're going to be putting into that uh, enviro grid. You can use granular fill, so stones. Uh, you can use dirt and vegetation, or you can use concrete. Um, really, um, applications or the material that you're going to use is based on what type of flow is going to be going off over it, um, if there's a hydraulic flow component to it, um, or just application, you know, is there going to be vehicle traffic? Um, so forth and so on. Um, so things we can help you with, uh, if you contact us, we'll be more than happy to walk you through how to make those decisions. Um, but information is provided to you there um, to help you with that. So appreciate you joining me for this uh, presentation on how to use Envirogrid.